One of the very best features of the Steam Deck is the awesome Emu Deck app, which greatly simplifies downloading and configuring all the very best emulators you'll ever need together in a slick user interface. So here are the six simple steps that you need to get Emu Deck for Windows set up on your Ally. So let's dive straight in and start with step one, which is downloading Emu Deck. The link is in the description. And at the time of recording, this is 2.1.18. Next, we need to sign up to the Emmy Deck Patreon with the link in the description, as it's currently at the time of recording this in beta, with the developers promising to release it for free before 2024. I personally highly recommend this, as I do think it is worth it, plus it is a great way to support these awesome developers. But you can always just sign up and then cancel if you really don't want to pay every month for the updates or if you do want a completely free solution then check out my retrobats tutorial right here on the channel next for step two finally .exe file that we just downloaded which in my case is the downloads folder run it and then install it a few prompts will pop up, so just click OK on each of them to continue. I did get this error message, but just close the window down and when installation is complete, simply log in with your Patreon information. After logging in, we need to copy our token code and paste it into the empty token box area to confirm our account. For step three, with Emmy Deck for Windows now installed, we now need to set it up. You can choose easy mode and customize options later, but let's select custom mode to walk through each step in this together. Next, let's select what drive you like your own directory to be on. Normally for handhelds, I would suggest to an SD card to free up space, but um, unless you like living life on the edge, I think I'm gonna stick to the Allies internal SSD. Next, select the ROG Ally handheld, which is a nice touch from the awesome developers to tailor Emmy Deck, especially for each of the different Windows handhelds. Great job, guys. Now select every emulator to be installed and configured. Next, I'd highly recommend setting auto save to on for these specific emulators. If you want to enable retro achievements, which add a nice modern twist to retro games, then you can log into your account right here. These next options are all what you personally prefer as a gamer. For me, I'm going to select game bezels to on for an even more of a nice retro feel for these older systems. 4x3 for classic Sega systems, and also 4x3 aspect ratio for classic Nintendo. I'm going to select the wider 16.9 aspect ratio for classic 3D games and also GameCube games. I'm going to keep LCD shader to off for these four handheld retro systems, but you can select on if you want to truly recreate the old look feel. Next, I'm going to put the CRT shader to on as it brings back memories for me of those old school TVs that I had as a kid and I'll choose off for classic 3D games. Remember you can always change these settings later on. Now select the theme of the interface. For me personally, I love the modern look. Your overview screen will display all of the configurations you've selected. So if you're happy with all of this, then click finish to begin the installation. And this is where the magic happens. Azimi Deck now saves us many hours of downloading and configuring all of these emulators. When it's finished downloading, this info message pops up telling us that we must set the control mode as gamepad instead of auto, otherwise our controls when we're gaming may not work. So remember this. Next, you can select cloud saves like to your Google Drive, which is super helpful if you have a Steam Deck like me or other gaming handhelds or gaming laptops and PC rigs to sync all of our save data across whatever device we may be playing on. This screen will pop up, so just click skip for now and Emmy Deck is now fully configured. 
Just before we move to step four, if you've learned something from this video, then be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons right now, as it gives the channel a massive boost. I so appreciate all of your incredible support. You guys rock. Are you ready? Well, you bet your ass I'm ready. It doesn't matter if you're ready. <laughs> Also keep a close eye on the channel's community tab for regular polls, such as this one from a few days ago where 23% of you emulate old PlayStation systems and a whopping 45% of you mainly emulate the Switch. Back to it now and for step 4 we will open the drive we installed Emidec on, open the emulation folder, open the ROMs folder and start putting your games, which in emulation terms are called ROMs, into the correct folders. So for example, SNES, just copy and then paste this into the SNES folder, and GameCube into the GC folder, and so on. Next, some of the more modern emulators require BIOS files, which more information about this can be found with a simple Google search. So let's open up the emulation folder, then BIOS folder, and put them in here. In fact, the Emidec wiki page with the link in the description is really useful to learn more about which emulators require a BIOS. You can double check that all of your BIOS are installed and working correctly by heading into Emidec, then BIOS Checker, and if you've downloaded the correct BIOS for your systems, then this should all be green just like this. For step five, let's now look at Steam ROM Manager. Now that the ROMs and BIOS are in the correct folders, so make sure Steam is completely closed, so either click on the icon or open up Emidec, and launch the Steam ROM Manager. Parsers allow you to toggle which emulators and games you want added to your Steam library. So just make sure we toggle Emulation Station to on, then hit Preview. Click Parse to scan all the ROMs in your library and download artwork for every game. And here you can edit artwork or afterwards in Steam. Click save to Steam, wait for the done message to appear, then close Steam ROM Manager. Restart the Steam app from the game library, change the control to gamepad, and you'll now be able to scroll through and see your ROMs and emulators now showing in your Steam library. For step six, open up Steam and find and launch Emulation Station, which is the awesome front end where we can access all of our favorite games in one convenient place. All of our ROMs are categorized by each system, and to scrape artwork for your ROMs, hit the menu button, click Scraper, select your systems, then go back and click Start. If you do have a lot of ROMs, then this may take a while, so grab a drink. And finally, for the final step seven, go to Armory Crate, press the add button on the top right, press LB to bring up File Explorer, and search for the directory of emulation station.exe to add it to the Armory Crate app. Here are some very useful Emidec hotkeys such as start and select together to exit out of a game. And a final tip is that if you do have any control issues on some emulators, then simply open command center and make sure your gamepad is in control mode. I'd love to hear what are the first three games that you will play with Emidec for Windows. Also let us know if there are any specific tips and settings that you recommend for Emidec in the comments below. And as a little extra bonus for watching right to the end of the video, I'd love to share this awesome quote. Never reply when you're angry. Never make a promise when you're happy. And never make a decision when you're sad. Having the best timing will help us avoid making bad decisions and get into tricky situations. So stay encouraged today, guys. And check this video out if you want to find out how the ally may be about to get a big boost from Xbox. I appreciate every single one of you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.